Good morning, and welcome to Montgomery College's Rockfield campus. On behalf of my fellow directors, I'm so pleased to be with you this morning to celebrate the Becker family and the incredible, powerful, and long-lasting impact they've had on this campus and on Montgomery College in general. As a longtime resident of Montgomery County, I was familiar with the Becker family name, but it wasn't until I joined the foundation board in 2017 that I learned of the impact that the Becker family has had on this institution. When I joined the foundation board, Ken Becker was our chair, and it was clear to me then how important Montgomery College was to him and how focused he was on our mission. I would later learn that Ken's father, Arthur, had also been a director and that Montgomery College played an, a role in the lives of all of Arthur and Miriam's children and now their grandchildren. As foundation directors, our role is to advocate on behalf of the college. We spread the word, if you will, about the opportunities the college provides, reminding our friends, our neighbors, and our business associates of the importance of supporting the college. Arthur and Miriam Becker and their family willingly embraced their roles as Montgomery College advocates. The Becker family is an outstanding example of the difference we can make in the lives of others. On behalf of everyone at the Montgomery College Foundation, especially your fellow board members, Ken, please know how thankful we are to all of you. The Becker family are true friends of Montgomery College, and we are forever grateful. It is now my pleasure to introduce the college's 11th president, Dr. Jermaine F. Williams. Thank you very much, Ms. Alkis, for that introduction. I'm delighted to be here with you this morning to dedicate this space in honor of the Becker family and their numerous contributions to Montgomery College and our students. I'm particularly grateful to gather together with all of you here where it all started for what we now know as our Rockville campus. As a very successful real estate developer, Arthur Becker and his business associates owned land throughout the area in the 50s and the 60s, including the very land where we are here today. The transfer of this land began as a business transaction in 1961, but it ultimately led to a lasting bond between Arthur, his wife Miriam, their five children, their grandchildren, and countless Montgomery College students. Some years later, Arthur served on the foundation's board of directors and was a valued, trusted volunteer leader. But his commitment to the college and our students didn't stop there. As parents, Arthur and Miriam understood that opportunities that only higher education provides, and they wanted to help ensure that the children of others would have access to the same opportunities they provided to their own children. Phyllis, Ken, Richard, Marjorie, and Bill. In this way, they opened doors for many and also imparted to their children the values that they held dear. Through example, they taught their children to give back. Rather than receiving gifts for their birthdays or anniversaries, Arthur and Miriam requested that their children support the scholarships they established. I can only imagine the pride that your parents would have um, knowing that this tradition continues today. Because of this, more than 400 students to date have received the Arthur P. and Miriam G. Becker scholarship. More than 400 students. We can clap for that, that's huge. And that number will continue to grow. We stand here today to recognize the transfer of land Arthur Becker and his partners negotiated. But perhaps more importantly, we stand here in recognition of the lives he and Miriam touched and their children do now in such a lasting, positive way. Grateful recipients of the Arthur P. and Miriam G. Becker scholarships can be found working throughout this community. When a nurse who received the Becker Scholarship cares for a patient at Holy Cross Hospital, that is a tribute to Arthur, Miriam, and their children. 
when an aerospace engineer like Catherine Shelton, who took the time to be with us this morning, works on a project. That too is a tribute to Arthur, Miriam, and their children. And when a Montgomery County public school teacher stands in front of their classroom and their students and helps them learn how to sound out a word or solve a mathematical equation, that also is a tribute to Arthur, Miriam, and their children. Yes, Arthur Becker will always be known for the impact he had on the community as a real estate, real, real estate developer, without a doubt. I, I would posit, I would invite you all to embrace the idea that perhaps his greatest impact has been on helping families throughout Montgomery County gain access to higher education. Arthur and Miriam began a family tradition of supporting Montgomery College that continues to be carried forward by Phyllis, Ken, Marjorie, Richard, and Bill. They in turn are passing this family tradition onto their own children. Like the scholarships that Arthur and Miriam established, the Becker family's tradition of positively impacting Montgomery College students' lives will continue to grow. Its legacy is opportunity, achievement, and students who change their lives. Thank you, thank you, thank you again for joining us this morning and for all you do to support the college's mission. It is now my pleasure to introduce you to a proud MC alumna and grateful Arthur P. and Miriam G. Becker scholarship recipient and current Johns Hopkins School of Engineering master's candidate, Catherine Shelton. Thank you, Dr. Williams. If someone had told me when I was a student at Watkins Mill High School that I would one day become an aerospace engineer pursuing a master's degree at Johns Hopkins University, I would not have believed them. Um, after all, back in high school, which was many, many, many years ago before any kind of STEM movement, uh, math was my worst subject. And I didn't really apply to any colleges. I was too focused on hanging out with my friends and um, just having fun, too much fun to really make any future plans for myself. So I wound up at MC registering two days before class started. And I took an acting class at the Rockville campus because I knew that ever since I was five, I did want to be an actress. Um, after two semesters of still hating math, failing speech, and almost failing a philosophy class, I realized that I needed a break from school. My parents said, okay, that's fine, but if you decide to go back, you're gonna have to pay for it yourself. So I told myself, okay, great. I'll just move out at 19 and work for a living and move in with a boyfriend and enjoy some newfound freedom. Well, you can imagine how quickly that went on before I realized, hmm, maybe this isn't the, the best plan. So once I realized a degree was something that I actually wanted and I saw as something worth having, I realized I had no money to go back to school. So I decided to join the Air Force because, well, they said they would pay for it. And I joined the Air Force in the delayed enlistment program in June of 2001. And I was scheduled to go into basic training uh, November of that year. And then 9-11 happened. I called my recruiter up and she said, just go on your scheduled date. I have 40 year olds trying to sign up right now. So um, I went in in November and I enjoyed my time in the service. I was a flying crew chief on the KC-10 refueling aircraft. And I was so busy traveling, I didn't really have time to go to school. A little something the recruiter must have forgotten to tell me. So online learning wasn't really a thing yet and America was in the beginning of a war. So after three deployments and traveling to more countries than I can remember, I realized I wanted to be an aircraft mechanic for life. I had signed up for the Chapter 35 GI Bill, because that's what it was back then, and I still wasn't sure if traditional academia was the path I really wanted to take. Um, I was honorably discharged at Peterson Air Force Base, Colorado, 
and after going through a horrendous breakup with my ex-fiance at the time, I found myself practically homeless, jobless, in a veteran-saturated town with no degree to set me apart from everybody else that was getting out and also looking for a job. To this day, this was truly the lowest point in my life. I decided to make a humbling move back home to my parents who graciously took me back in and gave me the space to start my life over. I got a very stressful, thankless job to get by, and after work, I'd find myself crying on the way home and reeling from the miserable breakup still on top of the now nerve-wracking job. Most days when in this state, I go to the local airport and watch the planes land. This provided some much needed personal healing and grounding in my life. This is where I realized I wanted to be in aviation for the rest of my life. I finally, finally realized what 18 year olds are expected to know right out of high school. I marveled at the little discovery and compared it to when I made my decision after the experience I had had. I didn't feel like I'd wasted any time per se, I just came to terms with my own goals in my own time. So now it was time to get to work. <laughs> Influenced by me and me alone, I decided to go back to school. With the GI Bill, I went to the University of District of Columbia during the day to become a licensed airframe and power plant mechanic. And I did a three hour car, bus, metro ride commute to Ronald Reagan National Airport every day. And I took general education courses at night at MC. This time I was extremely motivated I had had some life experiences that translated well into hard work in my studies, and I also had a better sense of my strengths and interests. When I was in the vocational program at UDC, I kept asking myself and other students and teachers, why does it work like this? And why can't it be easier on the mechanic if we make it this way? And after listening to the many colorful responses that one the one that stuck with me was, I don't know, Catherine, why don't you just become an engineer and figure it out for yourself? So that's what I did. It was then that I realized I wanted to be not just any engineer, but an engineer that knew how to turn a wrench, something that in my current career has proven invaluable over and over again. So with the help of my wonderful advisor, Ann Schleicher, we devised a plan that I would continue with UDC and start engineering courses at MC. Well, this put me in need of uh, more tuition than my GI Bill could afford. So when I started looking for scholarship, scholarships to supplement my extra tuition cost, UDC did not have the resources available. I also lived in Maryland, so I looked to MC for scholarship opportunities. What I loved most about my time at MC was the small class sizes and the professors who take the time to get to know their students and their unique goals. These professors saw the drive and hard work I was putting in and recognized it. Hearing all about the massive class sizes and the professors' extra research responsibilities, I was silently wishing MC could be a four-year school. <laughs> um, I thrived in the environment I was at, and as for the speech class I failed seven years later, I took it with the same professor and got an A. I didn't let him know I had taken the class before. He didn't recognize me. <laughs> Because of the MTAPS program, I was able to transfer to the A. James Clark School of Engineering at the University of Maryland, ahead of my academic peers in math and physics. This was an even bigger accomplishment than when my peers got accepted, because at the time, Maryland was their safety school. Well, Maryland is now a big, Big Ten competitive school, and it was an honor to get accepted. However, as much as I love the engineering program at Maryland and the opportunities it provided, I think when I think back on my educational journey, it was my time at MC that had the greatest impact on my future. It was at MC that I was to be able that I was able to develop a plan, and at this very same plan led me to be with you today. I not only had access to outstanding professors who valued my distinctive goals, but I was also the recipient of Arthur P. and Miriam G. Becker Scholarship. Because of this scholarship, I was able to focus on my engineering courses and continue with my AMP program at UDC. After receiving the scholarship, I wrote to Mr. and Mrs. Becker to express my gratitude 
and share plans for one day becoming an engineer. Now I know that my letter was one of many others that would receive that they would receive, and there are now more than 400 others that have written to the Becker family expressing appreciation and sharing their dreams. Although I have never had the opportunity to meet Mr. and Mrs. Becker, I feel like I know something about them. For example, I know that they wanted me, they wanted for me the same things that they wanted for their own children, which is access to a high quality education. I know that without ever, ever having met me, they wanted me to be able to fulfill my potential. Finally, I know that I owe them and you a world of gratitude. The scholarship your parents and grandparents provided allowed me to focus on my education and my future. I've come a long way since the days of an average high school student who is unclear about her future. I am now pursuing my master's degree in space systems engineering from the Whiting School of Johns Hopkins University. I also work at their applied physics laboratory in Laurel as a quality engineer in the space exploration sector. During my interview, they expressed how impressed they were that I have both aerospace education and mechanical hands-on ability. I was directly involved with this DART spacecraft mission. Building a spacecraft in the middle of a pandemic is no easy task. <laughs> this spacecraft successfully impacted an asteroid at the end of September this year and was the first historical mission for NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office. It showed that humanity now has a chance to protect the Earth from a possible, possible catastrophic asteroid impact. The next mission I'm involved with is something called the Dragonfly mission, and that will go to Saturn's moon Titan and land a nuclear-powered octocopter to explore the richly organic world for the building blocks of life. Looking back, I now know that there are many things that factored into my academic and professional success. One is the amazing professors I encountered while I was at MC. Another was the recognition that hard work really does pay off. And lastly, to have people that believe in you, are in a position to help you, and make the time to do so makes all the difference. Finally, the Becker scholarship I received reminded me that there are people in this community who believed in me who were invested in me, and who wanted me to be more successful. I hope that I have made them proud. It is now my pleasure to introduce you to Maura Ayala, a current MC student and fellow Arthur P. and Miriam G. Becker Scholarship recipient. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine, for the introduction. Your academic journey is such an inspiration to all of us. First, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the members of the Becker family for making the scholarship possible for me. I feel very grateful when I learned that I was selected as a recipient for your scholarship. I would like to take the time to share my personal story and future career plans. I was born and raised in Silver Spring, and I come from a low-income family with immigrant parents. Since I was a young girl, I always knew I wanted to go into the medical field. It, it has always been my passion to help others. My parents have always wanted to see me succeed and to follow my dreams. In 2019, I graduated from Clarksburg with an, academic, with, the, with an amazing academic record and over 260 student service learning hours. After high school, I knew I wanted to attend Montgomery College and to get my associate's degree before transferring to a four-year college. I'm currently in the process of becoming a dental hygienist. Once I complete my prerequisites at Montgomery College, I then plan to transfer out to the University of Maryland Dental School. Once there, I plan on pursuing a bachelor's degree in dental hygiene and afterwards taking it one step further and, and obtaining my master's in dental hygiene, which University of Maryland also offers. Montgomery College provides so many opportunities and resources to help you achieve your academic and personal goals. The support I have received, which includes the scholarship, helps me to keep pushing forward and reminds me to not give up on my dreams. While at Montgomery College, I'm taking courses to complete my associates in general education STEM. Currently, I'm taking four courses, microbiology, essentials of organic and biochemistry, human development, and pre-calculus. I enjoy taking science classes and have a history of doing very well in them. At Montgomery College, I am also part of a program called Achieving the Promise Academy, also known as ATPA. 
I meet with my academic coach once every week and we go through the process of my classes. Also, in my first year of Montgomery College, I was offered to be part of Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society since I was and still am an outstanding academic standing. I'm currently a proud Phi Theta Kappa Honor student. Along with being a full-time student, I also work part-time at an art facility called Black Rock Center for the Arts. The scholarship that your family provides me has helped my family in so many ways. I will be the first person in my family to graduate from college. When I learned that I received the Arthur and Miriam Becker scholarship, I was ecstatic. And first thing I wanted to do was to let my parents know the amazing news. My mom is here with me today because like me, she wants me to be, she wants to be part of this wonderful recognition for the Becker family. With this wonderful opportunity, I am able to take classes that will help me reach my goals of becoming a dental hygienist. Once again, I would like to thank the Becker family for the amazing opportunity that you have presented to me. Thank you. And now I am happy to introduce President of the, of the County Council, Gabe Albor Albornoz. Whoa. <laughs> It's like a mic drop situation. Um, <laughs> Catherine and Mauda, congratulations that you both are outstanding examples of the legacy of Miriam and Arthur. And what a beautiful and special day to be here in Montgomery County. In many ways, Montgomery College is the heart of Montgomery County because it represents what's possible. My parents actually met as students at Montgomery College in 1972 possibly in a quad, I'm not sure. <laughs> but what today reminds us is when we have an outstanding family, such as the Becker family, who invests their time and energy and treasure, and really in a way, Miriam and Arthur served as farmers because you have been planting seeds in Montgomery County now for generations. I am so proud to have the opportunity to speak on behalf of all of my colleagues today on the County Council, all of our policymakers, in thanking the Becker family for your remarkable dedication and commitment and investment, not just in Montgomery College, but to future generations to come. And it's appropriate that a quad is named after the Becker family, because quads are often the soul of college campuses. Friendships will be made here. Ideas will be able to be fostered. This is an area where students will be able to relieve a little bit of stress. This is an area where they will be able to get some much needed calmness during what are sometimes difficult days. And I hope that many, if not all of them, stop to read this plaque and acknowledge that they would not be here today if not for the remarkable vision of Arthur and Miriam Becker. And so it gives me great pleasure to now introduce Ken, who is speaking on behalf of the entire Becker family. Ken has carried forward the tradition of commitment of excellence and investment in our community through his service on the foundation board, but his philanthropic and business leadership is clear. But what's also clear is that I'm sure his parents are very proud of him and of his family. So without further ado, Ken Becker. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed first. And I'll try to keep a dry eye, but it won't be easy. Good morning, everybody. And thank you all for coming out this morning. And thank you, Council President Albanaz. That was a, uh, a special honor to receive an introduction from you. And uh, uh, I know we are fellow Whitman uh, alums, as my siblings all went to Whitman as well, so there's something else we have. And thanks to the entire council and executive for their stalwart uh, support for the Montgomery College and its mission over these many years. Uh, and thank you, Board Chair Michael Brittenall and the uh, Montgomery College Board of Trustees and President Williams for his high honor and tribute to us this morning and to my late uh, parents Arthur and Miriam Becker 
and continue. I have to go with some additional thank yous because this is such a, a special day for us, so bear with me. <laughs> uh, thank you as well to uh, Steve McAuliffe, my successor foundation chair, and to Mary Pat Alcas, uh, vice chair, Joyce Matthews, our MC interim senior vice president, uh, Craig Iozo, uh, acting foundation executive director, uh, Katie Kumkumian, Director of Donor Relations, who has done an incredible job planning this event today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And my fellow Foundation board members and our talented and dedicated staff. My thanks uh, are also, of course, uh, extended to my Becker family members. Uh, we had a dinner last night and uh, 40 of us that uh, hadn't really gotten together in many years, thanks to the pandemic and the idiosyncrasies of timing. And uh, it, was, it was very special uh, to think about uh, my parents being uh, uh, the source of this prodigy and, uh, and uh, the values that they expressed and, and raised us with. Um, today, uh, I, and I would note that uh, part of that, and I'll, I'll highlight my siblings again, my uh, Phyllis, uh, Margie, Richard, and Bill, um, our family's now a senior generation, which I still find somewhat shocking to <laughs> say, uh, but we are where we are. Uh, so today we honor Arthur and Miriam Becker, and particularly my dad, Arthur Becker, for his vision, values, and generosity. He was the kind of guy whose humility would have moved him to decline this honor. Uh, but my siblings and I witnessed him living the values represented by this honor all our lives. His progressive and honest approach to all of life's challenges always had him rooting for the less advantaged, always encouraging his kids to th think about those less fortunate, and always talking about current events and how people were impacted by those events. And it, it rubbed off, I can tell you. Occasionally, Dad would talk about his family struggles growing up through the Depression in the Bronx, New York, but his parents certainly impressed upon him the value of education. Following his graduation from DeWitt Clinton High School in the Bronx, he made incredible efforts to advance his education, taking classes at night, uh, working during the day, uh, and spending hours commuting from one end of New York to the other. And. Um, that effort actually was interrupted by World War II and his service in the Air Force, but ultimately, through job experience and independent learning, um, he was able to pass the architectural boards and become a licensed architect and build a real estate development business that proved to be incredibly successful, due ag again in, in no doubt, no, no small part to uh, his intelligence and his drive and his uh, desire to succeed, as some of our Becker uh, scholarships expressed today. Um, at age 65, which now for me seems so young, uh, <laughs> he wrote a letter to the Social Security Administration. In the letter, he expressed his belief that others were in much greater need of Social Security funds than he, and he respectfully declined those benefits. Social Security said, hmm, okay. <laughs> My mother followed suit with the same request and result. Their accountant had never heard of such a thing and questioned the move, but they never wavered. Uh, My parents were always so proud of that action, and it certainly served as yet another example for uh, their kids as to who they are and who they were. My, my father loved his time on the Montgomery College Foundation and the opportunity to assist Montgomery College students uh, through their scholarships. I believe he reflected strongly and identified strongly with the students he helped, reflecting back on his own struggle to advance his education following high school. And when he spoke to me about the joy of giving back uh, through the Montgomery College Foundation, he often cited some of those challenges. 
So I was particularly honored when the Foundation invited me to serve out Dad's remaining board a term in 2005 following his death in November 2004, 18 years ago. It was then that I saw firsthand the impact he had made, and I resolved to build on that legacy. I was further honored with renewed board terms, committee assignments, and ultimately serving as vice chair and then as chair of this incredible organization, uh, which gave me renewed feedback and satisfaction that we were doing some good things and, 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 and building the organization even stronger to continue those good things. Gift giving is real. The reward is as real for our donors as it is for our recipients. And I am immensely proud of our 400 plus Becker scholarship recipients to date and the equal number of thank you notes we received and the beautiful remarks we heard from Catherine and Mara today. Those remarks were so good you could, we could just have quit there. <laughs> it, was, it, it told the whole story it told why we're here, and it told what we're accomplishing, um, and how uh, th this is such important work. Uh, the dedication of this quad space on this Rockville campus of Montgomery College is a true testament to the generosity of my parents, my family, all of our friends and extended family who have given to our scholarships, often honoring life cycle events of friends and family members in the process. My message here is that all donors can mark special milestones and events in this manner and greatly amplify their expression of concern, joy, happiness, or loss through their support of our Montgomery Co uh, College Foundation mission. That mission, assisting all those in need of wishing to better themselves, their families, their communities through their educational invest, uh, advancement. So thank you. Thank you, thank you for everything and for this recognition.